Anyway, should we talk about Study Abroad Girl? Oh, yeah, yeah. Another hot chick for right-wing guys to have a chimp out to. Another wanderlust. Though not really, I guess. She didn't enjoy her time abroad. Was was it in Business Insider? I think so. That published a very brief personal essay Mm -hmm. by a girl who studied abroad in Florence. Yeah. And did not, didn't like it. And she had some complaints. Yeah. That I didn't find particularly egregious. There was a lot of humble bragging yeah, going on yeah. where she was like, <laughs> there's a lot of like, my peers wanted to take cheap Ryan air flights to go see sex shows in Amsterdam and get wasted in Ibiza. And meanwhile, I wanted to travel for personal research and exploration <laughs> and, and improvement. And they just like didn't share my values. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was lonely. Or um, the one where she was like, I wanted to live in a house with seven people and do potlucks, but actually they were traveling abroad. The locals were hostile toward me (laughs) and I was often alone. And it was like that kind of thing. I mean, it's literally like a troll bait article designed to infuriate people for clicks. Yep many such cases why even publish it yeah one wonders but i'm done i'm done piling on young people and young women especially and young women especially though young men don't really get as many uh think piece opportunities nowadays but yeah i'm sure if they did they'd be just as annoying you know what's so strange hmm. you're right that young men don't get any think piece opportunities but you would think that while young white men might be um throttled from pitching to magazines young black and asian men would be welcome with open arms but yet you don't see those think pieces much either there's a nice living to be made being like the one black or asian guy who's culturally with it and middle class and can pander to libtards but yet they don't just, exist just goes to show it's a woman it's world. a woman yeah it's a you woman's know, sport. They're the best at talking about themselves. Yeah. The minutia of their experiences. Perhaps they've internalized this essayistic voice mm-hmm. more than men have. Anytime I read Love or Joan Didion for a prolonged period of time, I do find myself internalizing this like manner of speaking and uh, this idea of myself as someone that could write a little essay yeah, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> about something and i just don't think men have feel that impulse maybe quite as much yeah which is good it actually um makes me rethink my commitment to race science Hmm. because it turns out no men of any races (laughs) are really into quote telling their story which is a cool thing about men in general that's nice yeah i love that about the brothers it's true. I read the White Album and Slouching Toward Bethlehem mm. like last summer, and I found myself thinking in Didion voice. Of course, yeah. Yeah. But or only. Cordy septic. Only the, the parts where she was really conservative and racist and talked about the w- water system in, <laughs> in Los Angeles <laughs> County. <laughs> Sontag's stock is really plummeting because I think everybody has gotten wise to the fact that she's kind of dowdy and humorless and rigid. Well, she's boring. She's not yeah. into rock. Yeah. <laughs> As Polly is. <laughs> she's not into rock. So she really has no idea what's going on. Susan is, is too much of like a Capricorn to let loose. Very much she so, She has like yeah. big Capricorn energy. Mm-hmm. She's a stick in the mud and everybody can feel it. We're like the Steve Saylor of astrology. <laughs> <laughs> I read the Sigrid Nunez biography of Susan Sontag. Uh, Sigrid Nunez is the former girlfriend of her son, who she abandoned to like to study abroad in Florence. <laughs> she was 21. Studied, you went to Egypt, right? So it wasn't technically a study abroad. It was a scholarship that the IFA gave to all first year students who like had a certain GPA. Mine was a 4.0, haters. Hey. You get $3,000 to go anywhere. And because I was a terminal contrarian, I chose not to go to like Florence or Paris or anywhere I probably should have gone. And I went to uh, Egypt and Istanbul Mm -hmm. with my gay best friend. (laughs) That's fun. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. It was a learning experience. But I did kind of fake study abroad in Florence briefly for like a week or two because I went to visit my sister who did the full semester. Oh, okay. 
And did she have a good time? I think she had a great time. Yeah. She met a lot of her like lifelong friends there, developed a keen interest in Italian culture. Yeah. Well, she's better adjusted clearly than this. Yeah, this totally. Yeah. She's not an attention whore and has normal personal boundaries and this is into her own privacy. <laughs> <laughs> good for her. But I personally loved studying abroad in Italy. I'm like you at Yale. <laughs> Hello, fellow students. That study abroad trip was the um, location of my, like, of being propositioned by the guy on the island. Say more. So I was 20. We went to Terramina in Sicily. Mm. And Terramina is like a resort town. There's like a beautiful hillock in the ocean with a gorgeous bronze age villa on top of it that was like studded mm. with fake ruins i.e a rich person lived there yeah and my sister and her boyfriend at the time were like having a couple's fight so i swam off and scaled the hill and this guy came out fully <laughs> naked and it was bronze age pervert the rumors the are true we are story, childhood yeah. friends and he started speaking to me in Italian and I made out some phrases about... You made like, out with him. I made out with him. <laughs> well, I'll get to that. <laughs> um, he, he was talking about like historic preservation, architecture and like antiquity. And so I was trying not to stare at his penis mm -hmm. and... I was like, okay, this guy's cool. That's just the way that they do it over here in Europe. They're into like... National nudism. Nudism <laughs> and sunbathing, like sunning their balls, yeah. slonking eggs, whatever. He's not trying to have sex with me. Everything is fine. It's cool. And then he like pinched the strap on my bikini and was like, take your costume off. Let's do it here. <laughs> and the cuck I was, I said, no thanks. And calmly walked down the mountain and swam back to my sister and her boyfriend. Honestly, I regret it. I should have done it and that gotten herpes. Been a, yeah. That would have been a story for I should have. I should have yeah. uh, had that tryst. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. But that was cool. That's what study abroad is for. Yeah. Regrets. Yeah. <laughs> Italy is great. I went to Italy. went to Milan with Rafi, my ex-boyfriend, mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. <laughs> And then again with the cast of Succession. Uh -huh. uh, that was like the most prolonged time that I had That was your study abroad. That was a kind of like my study abroad. I'm but over I here never... studying some broads. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never been, I've never been to Florence. But the humble braggy part where she was like, I spent my weekends like touring, like walking around blah blah and co cooking amazing meals, local ingredients local ingredients and then i was like what's the problem what was the issue it's because she was coping and seething because she had fomo and felt like mm. her classmates were having a good time and she wasn't right she thought she should be having a good time given the circumstances but somehow she wasn't well it is what you make of it yeah because they were all fucking and sucking yeah that's how gerardi and mimesis works mm -hmm. it's called being a woman yeah. You can never be happy because you covet something somebody <laughs> else has. She could have made the best of it, honestly. I know. I was reading that article and thinking, like, this sounds perfectly fine and fun. You have a lot of time alone and you get to cook with, like, local natural ingredients. <laughs> they call them bio over there, not organic, which I like. Yeah. Bio cotton. Yeah. It sounds like you're just bitter. But yeah. I'm past bashing young women who write troll bait for right wing and on. I just, yeah, I think if you're under 24, you should be forgiven for everything. You write some dumb little think piece. And people being like, she's going to sh surely be regretting it when she <laughs> hits the wall. And I'm like, she's a long way from the wall. When she's childless she and 40. Could, she could ruin this guy's life. She could ruin several guys' lives and still settle down well, and be when, fine. When do you hit the wall? What does it mean to hit the wall? To, to be past childbearing age? 